Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and uh, you're with Simon today. So today's video, we will be looking at Venus in Virgo and in particular, the transit that is going to be taking place from the 5th of September, 2022, all the way up to the 29th of September, 2022. So just under a month uh, where we're going to be experiencing this uh, Venus transit. And I'm sure many of you are very curious about how this is going to be playing out uh, in your life and what is essentially the evolutionary potential that we can extract from um, this transit that we're going to go through. So a few things I just want to quickly acknowledge. Uh, a lot of people have been coming through that are new to this channel, which is amazing. Welcome. Um, if you are new to my work in the sense that you haven't watched other videos, what I do is I look at the astrology and the transits and um, I take an evolutionary astrology perspective. So what that means is kind of understanding the sky and the, the way that the planetary activation is working and giving an analysis of how we are able to potentially um, activate to to, to integrate, to, to see how these um, planetary and heavenly bodies um, are reflecting to us our own evolutionary journey. So that's the way that I look at the astrology chart. I just wanted to kind of share that over there. And of course, my main goal is to help us empower ourselves in the way that uh, we can and using astrology as a tool to guide us with that process. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, my plan for today is to look at the Venus archetype. So I'm going to chat a little bit about that. I'm going to look at um, the Virgo archetype. And then what we're going to do is look at a little bit about how, well, I want to talk a little bit about how those archetypes, when put together, what potentially manifests from that. Okay. And, um, and then I've got a few uh, charts of uh, activations that I think are um, important in reinforcing the message. And then I'll close out today's video with um, a message that I feel we can all uh, get from uh, this, this actual uh, passage that Venus is going through. So that's the plan. And um, hopefully it will be something that is valuable to you and uh, you get a lot from it. Okay, so let's start with the Venus function. Okay, now again, from an evolutionary perspective, understanding it not as a planet, but as the way that the, what does Venus look like in the human condition, right? How does it materialize in our lives? Like how do we experience it? Okay, so from a emotional and psychological perspective, like how you are yourself, Venus speaks to the mechanics where we as human beings relate. So it's the relating function. Okay. Venus is the relating function between me and you, between you and your work, between you and your animals, between you and life. Venus is that mechanism that shows us and speaks to the way that we form relations with things. Okay. A lot of people will say, oh, that's Libra. That's true. Venus actually uh, influences both Libra and Taurus. Very important to understand because there's one side of Venus that says everybody has their own internal relationship to themselves. And then we have the way that we relate to people based on our expression of this self and this relationship to the self. Okay. So there's a internal process and then there's a extrovert process as an externalizing the way that you uh, project yourself to people. Okay. So Venus speaks to that function in us. That's why if you study the Venus in your chart, and let's say you have Venus in Gemini and you're in a relationship with somebody that has uh, say Venus in um, Pisces, for instance, you know, how you relate to the world, how you relate to, to things, how you relate to each other, um, are going to materialize through that Venus placement. So Pi Venus and Pisces will look at life through a lens of fluidity and, you know, things that are all good and you know, looking at deeper, higher spiritual practices, as an example. Whereas 
the Venus and Gemini person will just go, you know what? I love to read. I love to talk. I love to, to engage. I love to collect data, you know? Um, what does that relationship, what happens when you put those two components together? That's what's really interesting here. And that's how you can see the complexity in our human relations. That's why relationships can be and are oftentimes tricky because we may not necessarily know how that relating function works for us um, at, a, at a deep level. So really getting to learn your Venus is a great way to help you understand how to meet your needs. Okay, so relating function, okay? Virgo archetype here, again, from an EA perspective is, if we look at it from nature, Virgo is the, is the reflection of each thing, each object, each life form, essentially unfolding in each moment, okay? Virgo is that process that essentially says to us, this is the next step, this is the next step, this is the next step. So if you imagine a baby that's growing in a womb, you will, if you, if you watched it over a time frame, you'd, st you'd see the developments of the different parts of the body occurring. Venus says, this function needs to come before this function. That uh, growth process needs to come before that growth process. So Venus in reality reflects the step-by-step -step process of something unfolding, okay? In human and emotional psychology, the archetype takes on a different form in the sense that it's still the acknowledgement of things have a step-by-step -step process, but when we reflect it in our human psychology, it materializes as something weird in a way that where we experience a crisis. This crisis brings us attention to the moment. That moment then allows us to understand what is the sequence of things that are happening, so, um, and, and the effects of things. And then it reveals to us what necessary adjustments can be taken for improvement, okay? So the process of crisis leading to conscious awareness, leading to adjustment, is how Virgo works within our lives. And the, the crossover between how Virgo reflects itself in nature and how it materializes in the human experience is through the recognition of very sensitive and fine detail awareness, like very, very subtle detail awareness. So an example is if, um, if you've ever seen uh, or communicated with somebody or experienced reading Braille, which is when you're blind and you use the, the little bumps in a formation to be able to, to read something, that sensitivity on the hands and the ability to create the neural pathways in order for you to read um, something, even though your eyesight is not available, that would be a Virgo process because there's such a subtle sensitivity to the way that things are created in order for words or imagery or connections to form. So the crossover is that subtle sensitivity that recognizes the pattern. And when the pattern is, is not working or the, the logic sequence is broken or there's a, an error in something, Virgo comes along and says, hold on, crisis, 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 issue, issue, right? And then we come into hyper-focus and then in that hyper-focus, we can respond to it with a sense of adjustment, okay? So you can imagine what happens now with Virgo and Venus when they're working together. Did you see the crossover here? Okay. It's kind of like we're going through a phase where our relating function to life is going to materialize through a recognition of crises that are going to pop up around us. And then these crises will bring attention to things that need um, adjustments and improvements, whatever that may be, right? So here in the northern part of the world at the moment, there's a huge uh, en energy crisis that has taken place, particularly Europe. And we will become, it will become more and more uh, part of the collective conversation of the crises that we will be experiencing, right? The potential, like the energy crises, the, the bills that are going to be skyrocketing in terms of energy. And the same uh, in the States and, and other places. 
this Venus and Virgo will just highlight it. So it's always there. It's just that now Venus and Virgo comes through. And so any energy crisis will become more apparent. Crises of, of any nature will become more apparent. And it's really there to kind of like say, hey, by the way, there's something for us to deal with, right? So that's kind of the thing. My last thing that I want to say just on these two archetypes is Virgo also has a direct correlation to the emotional damage that we can carry regarding man-made guilt. This is underlying sense of shame. So guilt complex, shame, a feeling of inferiority, incompleteness. Um, Virgo correlates to the experience of why is everything happening to me? Because it's like crisis after crisis after crisis. I can't handle it. It's just too much. And so this is always happening to me, right? So that Virgo essence of why is the universe shitting on me, essentially. And this is, again, because, like I said, this is an ongoing experience of crisis after crisis that materializes and a feeling of never being able to liberate yourself from um, these crises. But they're... The, these crises are ultimately, Virgo is ultimately here to draw attention to things so that they have um, more gravity in your awareness. And as you address them and make necessary adjustments in relation to these crises, you will start to, um, in a sense, create better roots or clearer roots or address things that need to be addressed, as an example. Because the opposite of Virgo is Pisces. And here in Pisces, it's like, it's not real. It's not a crisis yet. It's, there's loads of food. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's no food over there, but it's like the reality of dealing with that is so intense that we need to kind of project a fantasy or an illusion there to, to, to withstand the, the impact and the ego structure. Okay, so um, shame, guilt, an underlying sense of imperfection. Why is it not going right for me? These are all complexes that can materialize with the Venus and Virgo if you have it in your natal chart. And the idea here is to really address these underlying feelings of imperfection and primarily also address the archetype of, of um, perfectionist complex, which is essentially boiled down to an abandonment trauma that we have where we try to create perfection outside of ourselves in order for us to, to feel loved. Um, and this is something that is a, a really, really big thing that needs to that is being healed in the collective at the moment right removing these ideas that um in order for you to create a video you should have everything perfectly because what happens if somebody makes a comment right it's like we're we're in stages of development and growing virgo and it's always for looking at the things that we can improve and improve our quality but to try to do it perfect and never actually get it done creates a paralysis Virgo is an archetype that correlates deeply to psychological and emotional paralysis because why bother doing it if it's if it's not right? Okay, so slow down is a big key word with this uh, Venus and Virgo, okay? Um, all right. Something else that I think is important to, to note with these transits, and I'll get into it with the, the charts over here. So we'll actually, let's go ahead and quickly look at the, the chart one at the moment, okay? So let's have a look at the chart of when Venus went into Virgo. So this is the, the 5th of September, yeah? And the first thing you wanna pay attention to is this sun at 12 degrees of Virgo in a natural square to Mars, which is in eight degrees of Gemini, right? There's a, you can see that the, the sun is sitting at 12 degrees of Virgo and Mars is at Gemini eight, right? So there's a square there. And we know that Mercury is gonna have, uh, is going retrograde very soon, which reminds me, by the way, any of you that have been interested in studying astrology with me, um, I'm gonna put a link in the description. And if you put your email on the wait list, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be um, opening up the astrology school so that you can sign up for that. And so if you put your details in the link in the description over there, uh, we'll let you know through that, through that, uh, through that email channel. Okay. Cause we thought you know, a lot of people have actually been asking for that and it would be a good time to do this during the Mercury retrograde phase. We get everything done, um, that we have not been able to do over the last three months. So 
Um, stay on the lookout for that. I'll put the link in the description to sign up for the waitlist for that, okay? And then we'll send you some information. Okay, so um, the upcoming retrograde, as you know, and so, of course, we're preparing Ver uh, Gemini qualities, Mercury qualities. And the, the natural square that takes place between Gemini and Virgo works like this. Gemini says, hey, let's gather lots of information. And Virgo then comes along with a very razor sharp detail and says, okay, before we begin to understand what the value of this information is, let's try to see, you know, what matters and what doesn't, right? What's, what's, what's nonsense here versus what could actually be applicable? What can be shortened? What can be made clearer, etc." So think of Virgo as the editor of the Gemini process, right? So of course, with this upcoming Mercury retrograde, we're having the square between Mars and uh, the Sun occur, and it's initiating a kind of editing phase. Now, what is the context of that? Well, the context of that has a lot to do with um, the, the cycles that we are and have been dealing with for the last month and a half, which is, hey, we are moving through a phase astrologically where shift in cultural and internal values are occurring, North Node, Uranus and Taurus, solar eclipse and Taurus. We are becoming uh, acutely aware of the fact that uh, we don't live in the old world where old paradigms and truths uh, exist. And a lot of us are deeply conditioned by these scripts, these ideas about what life is, these belief systems, these perspectives that we hold. And there's been for a long period of time a consistent renewal of is this really what life is about right we're questioning things we're asking is this the you know is this how it should be so there's there's a necessary need to to begin redefining things and there is a, a, a redefinition of things so this transit that you see on the on the screen at the moment is a initiation of us becoming more sensitive and then therefore addressing the the words that we use, the, the language that we use internally for ourselves, the scripts that we run consciously and unconsciously within ourselves around what we believe ourselves to be, the stories we tell ourselves around our value, our self-worth, the messages that are and the words that are used to reinforce values that we have. So we're in this dynamic tension between the liberation from the old and the curiosity to lead and explore oneself in a, in a new way, right? That's, that's what this is looking at you. So if we take a look at uh, this chart over here, you can see now you've got Venus sitting at six degrees of Virgo, Jupiter sitting at five degrees of Aries, and Mars is sitting at 11 degrees of Gemini. And this is happening on the uh, 10th, of September. Okay, so this is just after the, the Mercury goes retrograde. And what I find so fascinating here, because you've got to see it this way, you have to see that Mercury goes retrograde, but then it's like, well, what's the narrative around Mercury retrograde? It's not just randomness, right? And this is the narrative around it, or one of the narratives at least. So here we have Venus sitting in Virgo at six degrees and it quincunxes, it makes an inconjunct to Jupiter. And in previous videos, I shared that the South Node has been forming an inconjunct to Chiron. And what that's sounded like and looked like and expressed itself as an instinctual need to free ourselves from past psychological and emotional attachments and dependencies. This Venus in conjunct Jupiter comes along and says, now it's time to begin addressing, unfortunately through a crisis, where there are certain psychological, emotional, and collective myths that we still hold, resonate with, and express that reinforces old attachments, okay? While simultaneously dealing with the, the, the desire that is emerging in every single human being in many different ways to express and have freedom out of a system that feels outdated, senescent, uh, terminal, you know. So there is this, this Venus in Virgo is really pushing with this in conjunct to try to find this, this, this liberation between the old and the new. And we will experience it through 
Virgo bringing in a crisis for us to address and that crisis will allow us to analyze. Once we analyze, we can make certain adjustments. So what I see here, particularly in the northern parts of the world, is human beings starting to recognize that it's actually pretty absurd with current energy prices at the moment and energy structures. And I think there's, a, there's going to be a, an attempt to try to understand it from a new point of view, meaning is this how, is this how life is going to move forward? So it's going to create a necessary internal crisis in people to question their beliefs and, and truths around what is being said and such. And that will then bring to the surface an action. This is the square to Mars. So I don't know if many of you or, or if some of you are familiar with this person called Russell Brand. He does quite a lot of videos where he addresses these Gemini themes to the surface. And one of his videos where he addressed energy crises in the UK, particularly United Kingdom, there's a petition or something that you can sign up to where it says, don't pay your bills, your energy bills. I haven't looked into it further, but from what I can gather over here, these are people that are actively taking a stand to saying this is insane and we're not going to do that. Now, this is where this, this whole entire aspect comes in. Some cases, that's a really cool way to respond to it because the more people, the more power to the people. But in other cases, you are also going up against the established structure that will just turn around and say, well, if you don't pay it, we'll just turn it off. So this is where I'm talking about with this dynamic tension that's taking place. It's like there's a need to break free from these old complexes, but simultaneously, we're also going to be faced with the recognition and dependencies on the attachments to the old world. And so this is the kind of territory we're moving in right now. Okay. So this chart that you're looking at right now um, is actually on the day that Mercury is about to go retrograde. And you can see uh, the sun sitting at 16 degrees the south node at 15 degrees, and then Chiron at 15 degrees. So this is called the finger of God. Mercury is at the boomerang point, sitting directly opposite Chiron, and it's going to trigger it. So literally, when Mercury goes retrograde, it's going to trigger this whole entire underlying complex that is that, I, that I've been sharing of people's frustration and, and uh, tolerance for things bubbling to the surface and an attempt to try to, you know, interact with it. There, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to feel into how the potential um, scenarios will take out, but there are going to be different scenarios that are going to play out. People that can't pay for their bills, people that can, people that are trying to um, figure out different ways to do it. Ultimately, what this is really saying is that the, the juxtaposition between our attachments to social and political and state uh, connections and our vulnerabilities and our attachments will be on one side and the absolute need for freedom to break out of these themes because they've become insane will also be present and it's like how do we how do we find the intermediate how do we react and respond based on on those two dilemmas so uh, again like i said i have no idea what the answers are all i know is that this is the type of energy that's going to materialize for us right and of course a big part of this uh, energy has a lot to do with the upcoming Mars retrograde as well, which we'll do a video on too. Okay, so uh, finally, this is the 17th of, of September and why I wanted to show this was that you now have Venus and Mars in a in is what is called an exact uh, square. It's called an opening square or crisis in action square. So Venus at 15 degrees, Mars at 14. Now, what was really fascinating to me was how the moon literally crosses over Mars and Ven uh, well crosses over Mars and activates the natural square between Mars and Venus at the time. Like the synchronicity there is just it's just crazy to me and beautiful in many ways. But the reason why I'm bringing this in here is because this aspect between Mars and, and Venus over here is one where because the reason why it's called an opening square or a crisis in action square um, has to do with the attempt to take values and information that we have gathered and to try and implement them into our lives. But because the direction or the energy that we've moved in has not been established before or has, have, has, yeah, has been established, integrated, expressed before, there's uncertainty around how it goes. 
right? So what happens here with this opening square is that there is a two steps forward, one step back behavior. We try something, we see if it works, it works, yay, fantastic, we move forward with it. If it doesn't, we get insecure, we move back to our feeling of safety, and then we try to reapproach again. So taking in the, this, this arc that I've been talking about, where people will feel internally within themselves a, an attempt to want to free yourself from certain feelings of like um, stagnation, where you may feel that you want to move ahead with things, you want to break out of certain uh, ways of thinking, certain uh, perspectives that we have, uh, certain challenges that we may face as a collective that are outside of our own personal dynamics, how we resolve these complexes. These, these two things will be, again, opposite each other in, uh, within us, and we're going to have to find ways to, to, to think about them differently. And this opening square is an attempt to take certain action on certain ideas and insights that we may have gained over the last couple of months, because again, Mercury retrograde speaks to re re-experiencing what we have been experiencing over the last three months in terms of information gathered uh, so that we can move forward with it. So this is an integration and a movement forward and an attempt to try to do different things out. So for each of us, there's an, uh, there's an opportunity to try to push back on certain, like I said, messages, uh, perspectives, personal myths, certain truths, certain ways that we communicate with each other, uh, internally within ourselves, I mean, like the messages that you carry about what you think um, your life is about, what you, th you know, if you've got certain trauma responses, is this still true? These things, really, really like cleaning out what is, what feels outdated, what feels no longer relative, okay? This opening square creates the propulsion to act on these insights to say okay this is I'm going to do this differently I'm going to wake up differently I'm going to change my routine or whatever your goals are whatever the things that you that you're doing in your life this energy is an attempt to to help you make some progress with that but when you don't get that instant feedback that says hey you're doing a good job don't feel discouraged just understand that you've never put yourself in these positions before and so it's natural to kind of feel uncertain about them all right, so the last chart that we have on the screen over here is when Venus actually leaves uh, Virgo and it goes into Gem um, Libra. And again, what I think is really interesting about this, even though there's no Venus on this chart, is how we've got Mercury in the square to Mars. We've got Neptune now in the square to Mars. You know, Saturn is, is trining Mars over here. And what I sense at the end of this Venus transit is a series of reflections and insights that we will have within ourselves that will have come from crises that will now be at a position where we can make adjustments in our lives whether they be big adjustments or small adjustments it's all relative to wherever you are in your own life and these these insights will become evolutionary like shift potential so the ability to to integrate and make changes in your life where there is tension, so you will feel tension, the attempt to, to make these changes in your life, right? And to move forward with them. And whenever you create change in your environment, you have to recognize that there is gonna be some dis uh, like disruption um, because the ecosystem is based on how you have been. So, you know, if you're always consistently a people pleaser and then all of a sudden you start healing your boundaries and then you're like no expect there to be responses back from people saying what's going on that's what this energy is about it's it's like uh, as you begin to change in your life there can also be effects from that changes and the tension that comes along with it you know is is reflected through this uh, symbolism here that is not what it is at the core like these planetary systems are not looking at us saying okay now it's time to help you guys with this i'm trying to create a relating function here for all of us this is just a tension regarding the way that definitions communication the way that we believe things the way that we perceive things that's what this is like stimulating it's like pushing those buttons and it's inviting us to look at things from different points of views that's what i'm really addressing here Okay, so 
the overall arc, if I had to put it across like this, is that this Venus and Virgo transit is going to bring adjustments to our lives. It's going to help us address things that need to be addressed. Uh, we may experience them as feelings of emptiness, potentially, this kind of void. We may experience this transit as um, sometimes like, why does life have to be so miserable or like so hard? Right? Virgo archetype can feel that way because it's this kind of like, it's almost as if we're being disenchanted by things. And now we're seeing things and we need to interact with them. We can't avoid stuff, right? So helping us heal through addressing the things that need to be healed, okay? And the scope of this is A, it's influencing this Mercury retrograde. B, it's helping people begin to integrate necessary changes and adjustments in their lives for the things that you want to do. So if you've got this cool little project that you want to get onto, this is a phase where it's like, get stuck in because you're going to get stuff done and you're really going to refine it, right? Um, if you're somebody that is, you know, really wanting to, to do certain changes in your life, this is the type of energy that will help you get those changes moving in a way that is towards a goal that you've got. So it's overall a pretty positive thing, okay? All right, cool. So before I leave, I wanna let everybody know that uh, we have a few spaces open in the Metamorphosis program. So if you are wanting self-development work, if you wanna work with me on a one-to-one on -a -one level, because I just realized now that a lot of people are contacting me for um, readings, to do natal readings, chart readings, and I don't do them anymore. Um, because I felt like I have so much more impact with people over a long period of time. So if you want to work with me on a closer level, if you feel that you are ready to go into the soul work in, in that sense, then um, we've got a few spaces left on Metamorphosis at the moment. So there's a link in the description. All you need to do is just click on that. There's a form that I'd like you to fill out that helps me get a better sense of where you are and what your needs are. And then what I'd like to do is have a quick, like 15 minute free call with you. And I wanna see if I can actually help you. And if you're in a position where you can uh, work for three months or however long. So I wanna get a, a good sense of, of you know, where you're at and, and what uh, is important for you right now. And if there's an opportunity for us to, to work together. So if you wanna do that and you're interested in it and you're serious about that type of stuff, cause that's, that's the big work over here. If you wanna do that, you wanna change things, you understand complexes, heal trauma, understand the soul's purpose, all of these things, then you click on the link, fill out the form so I get a good understanding of you. Let's have a chat so that we can see if there's an opportunity to work together. Uh, and if there is, I mean, that, that's cool cause I've worked with uh, lots of people and I've really enjoyed watching people just grow in massive ways. It brings so much uh, love to my heart. And I have Venus and Virgo, right? With Mars. <laughs> so you can imagine that. Um, okay, cool. I hope that you got some value from this. As always, much love to all of you. Thanks very much for watching. I deeply appreciate your attention as always. And if you thought that this video was valuable and you want to let other people know, share it. Hit the like button so that YouTube says, hey, this is a cool video. Um, and you can also subscribe if you are new to the channel as well. All right, my friends, thanks very much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.